Now we are moving to a more imaginative reality. Our next speaker, we can set up the <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Our next speaker, Tonya Böbirkland, is going to talk about her life project almost, characters. Uh, she's got the MFA from Bergen Academy of Art and Design. And she started working on her project, The Characters, in 2008 with a name to encapsulate the entire artistic practice. So for the last 10 years, Birkeland's project has allowed her to give women's position within the landscape while exploring the authenticity of history. Her project, The Characters, awarded Birkeland the Victor Fellowship for the Hasselblad Foundation in 2012, and the first book of the Bhutan Trilogy in 2016, won second place in the Norwegian design context, Oretz Vakreste Bucher. She has also been published in the Norwegian Journal of Photography, Fritz Ur. And uh, yes, so she just published her new book. Yeah, Thank there we you. go. Thank you, Sophia. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, let's see. And actually, her picture you can see in our main exhibition there. <laughs> so let's see. Ah, you are here. Oh, find it. Yeah, can you find yeah. it for me? Yeah, it's just there. So you are here. Yeah. And then there is, I guess, PowerPoint is the easiest, right? Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Mm. Is there a slideshow button? This one and mine. Uh, Play from start, but I want to just be able to, um, but I'm not to just play, but to be able to yeah, play for start. That's fine. If you yeah. if you go. There we go. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, just, I mean, this book of mine. Uh, character number five. Thank you so much, Sophia, for this quick introduction. Just um, close the microphone. Yes. Thank you so much for this quick introduction, because then I don't have to spend so much time telling about my previous book. But um, character number five, the Bhutan trilogy, is a book about my the fifth of my alter egos, and my first four is presented in the book, the characters that I published on my sort of my own. Uh, artist-run publishing house, Bergen Kjett Publishing. And this is, uh, after that, we've also published Jo Straube's book, uh, Norsk So, and then we, uh, we have also, we're in this process of developing several books. Uh, and this one, character number five, has actually been five years in the making. So I started also working on this book in 2016. And this character is Berta Bolat ba Boyd, and she is a mountaineer. And she travels. So this is character, just sort of to quickly show you some pictures that sort of make you think back on my previous project. This is character number two, Tuva Tangel, in the Gobi Desert. This is character number four, Anna Aurora Astrup, uh, in the eastern part of Greenland. And now I'm going to talk about Berta Bullet Boyd, who is my fifth character. This is the book. It has like a quite, um, it is introduced uh, by uh, an introduction written by Stephanie von Spreta. And that introduction is also quite imaginary. I gave her the freedom to sort of dive into my artistic material, my travels and sort of my book dummy to write something that is more of a, uh, more of a, less of an essay and more of an imaginary text as well. Uh, the book is divided in three chapters. I worked quite closely with designer Annette Laurent during the whole process, also making a lot of small dummies and sketches on the way. Uh, and each chapter starts with a small uh, sort of just one sentence from the book, which is handwritten uh, by me. And then it's sort of followed by a short chapter of 14 to 16 pages of text. The first chapter among mountains and monasteries is a travel journal, like a traditional travel journal. Um, the second chapter, the Umulhari chapter, is a chapter that's more of, um, it's about she, Bertha, and it's more from my artistic point of view. And the final chapter, Ganka Punsum, is about you. And that you is sort of this merge between me as the artist, Bertha as a traveler, and you as a reader. 
Uh, and this way of sort of dividing it is simply because I had so many notes. I mean, writing on these chapters for the past five years, I had so many notes and ways I could do this. And I decided because I'd been sort of diving in and out of my alter ego and myself, I decided that I wanted all of these uh, different versions of my alter ego and sort of travel companion to be present. And the stage is set in Bhutan. And uh, I decided going there for the first time, this picture is the one that's presented here in the library, and going there for the first time, I sort of decided that I wanted to go, I wanted to make it a trilogy and I wanted to go uh, several times to Bhutan. And the reason is simply that this land is such a sort of, it's a land that sort of wants to be mysterious. It's quite unclear what is a myth, what is their history, what is something in between. So I sort of really wanted to, to get under the skin of this country. And going there for the second time, making your Mulhari chapter, I sort of, I already had friends from my first travel. So I went with the same guide, the same horse people on the final two travels. And it was also the same woman that, that sort of um, prepared all three of my expeditions. And I've decided because it's such a short presentation, I decided that I would like to talk mostly about my final travel um, I don't know if all of you have heard about Kankapunsum, but it's a mountain that's uh, divided between Bhutan and uh, Tibetan uh, or uh, China, Tibet. Um, and it's the highest unclimbed mountain on earth. And making this book, I've sort of tried to, and also the project, I've tried to travel through Bhutan in one line, but that line is sort of not really a line because of the mountain and mountain area around Gankapunsum. And uh, so there's a mountain of 7,400 meters that's never climbed by any, anyone, uh, at least not that we know of. And going there, this is a sort of a small, a small map of my route going in and out. It took me like 10 days with a small expedition. We were around, uh, we were nine people and eight horses, mules, and ponies. And I sort of went into really into unknown territory because I just wanted to finish my line through Bhutan, but this final leg of my journey proved to be a lot more, uh, a lot less traveled and a lot more sort of, more of an expedition than what I've done so far. And doing the final chapter, I also wanted to sort of bring in this feeling of there being other people around, this feeling of sort of almost turning the camera with this one, for instance, with, uh, with just the people and their hut, and this is where they stayed. It's a nomadic family and they were on their way going back down from the area around Gankapunsum. So they came sort of, I think this is on 4,200 meters above sea level, and they had sort of gradually traveled down from the higher uh, higher uh, grassing field with their yaks. And it's sort of, I find it sort of quite hard to uh, sort of talk about 444 pages in a book in 12 minutes, but this is at the foot of Gankapunsum. And I wanted to bring this picture to the stage because it's, I mean, imagine sort of working for at least a year with funding and sort of how to get there and everything. And then this one day when you're doing your sort of big leap to the base camp, it's just fog and snow and a bit of rain. Um, and like out of uh, my sort of uh, seven travel companions. It was only my mother who came as my assistant and two of the cooks that actually bothered to get out of their tents. So the four of us sort of made it to the base camp. The other ones just sort of stayed behind in a lower base camp together with our horses. And of course, there is not really any mountain. I mean, I could have done this picture probably in Finsa or just somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in Norway, but that's also sort of part of the story. And then going back down, 
Um, the morning after I woke up to sort of this clear view of Ganka Punsum, but because we're on such a high altitude, the horses cannot stay there any longer. So we need to turn around and just say bye bye to the mountain. But at least I know that Bertha and I, we were actually standing there. Um, and I mean, to me, it's sort of part of the, I mean, it's part of this thing about going on an expedition without conquering that it's not such a big deal whether you're there on a sunny, clear day, whether you get as far as you wanted to, it's just the travel itself. I have, I mean, talking about funding, that's always a thing with artist books, I suppose. And this book has been funded with support from uh, this small Bergenschatt publishing that's run by the people that run Jyllenpris Kunsthal. But it's mostly funded with sort of having uh, Arbeidsdepan, uh, having a scholarship from Kulturrad is actually what makes it possible for me to do these travels. But then I've also got support from Fritt Ur, and I've got um, uh, also, I mean, Preuss Museum bought this suitcase with all the objects. So it's probably going to be exhibited. All Bertha's object is going to be exhibited at Preuss Museum sometime in the future. And honestly, that is what made it possible to work with Jotte on this on a self-published book. Um, and this final, I mean, after these three chapters that start with a text, 14 to 16 pages, the pictures from each travel, um, I have a section with an uh, inventory list of Bertha's travels and a lot of the small props that, that's been used in the project for the past five years. And then finally, there's a section of images that are sort of flipping the camera completely around and seeing uh, the backdrop of all these places where I've been producing the photographs as a sort of end notes chapter. So for instance, the one down there, that's my their guide, Yisha, and his friend making a bridge because they wanted to do a lunch on the other side of the river. And it ended up with them having to be rescued by one of the horsemen. So, I mean, we sort of, I mean, we also have fun, of course, on these sort of traveling for 10 days with, with people that become your friends is quite, quite an adventure. And I mean, finally, I just want to say uh, thank you to everyone that's been part of the book, both here in Norway and in Bhutan. And I also want people to please just come and grab me um, after these presentations, after we've finished talking. And that, yes. yes, and ask questions if there is anything. And of course, the book is here so you can see it. There's also this, this map that I mentioned with all the travel routes. It's in a small envelope at the back of all the... Uh, books. So that's also something to investigate. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>